15 is Earl Morrill. In the event you might have joined us late, uh, you can see that Morrill has got pockets in his jersey to keep his hands warm. The temperature, according to what we're... to Mackey in the backfield and then threw long to Perkins. Jack Gregory was putting pressure on him from his right defensive end spot and it's third and ten for Morrill. And if Morrill had only known Ben Davis who was covering Perkins deep downfield fell down and if he could have just held the ball another split second Perkins would have had a clear shot to the end zone. Perkins is out now and Orr is back in. But Gregory was after Morrill in the last one so he had to Get rid of it. The line of scrimmage remains the same. The 31, third and ten. Matty is on the wing. The quickie is behind Jimmy Orr. And past Ben Davis. And Bob Matheson, the middle linebacker. So, Cleveland forces Baltimore into a punting situation with David Lee into the game. He averaged 39.4 per kick. His longest was 59 yards. He's kicking into the wind now. And Tommy McDonald goes deep along with Ben Davis. They're at their own 30. Lee gets it high in the air. Davis will return it from the 30. And a did I see a flag go down? No, it did not. Baltimore gives the football to Cleveland on the punt. And Cleveland goes from their own 35. Beginning Saturday, the 11th of January, the 6th Annual CBS Golf Classic gets underway. George Knudsen and Harold Henning meet the team of George Archer and Bob Lund in the opening match. $225,000 in prize money. Check your local program listings for the time in your area. The date is January 11th. Nelson giving to uh, Haraway. And Fred Miller made the tackle. We have 7.55 remaining in the third quarter and the clock running. Charlie Haraway, the ball carrier. Number 31. frustrating in fact you try to establish the ground game nothing happens on a carry and it really looks like a waste of time but a simple play like that may pay off in future calls it can concern those defensive linemen as we tried to point out a minute ago with the fact that they've got to get ready for the run and not just rush the passer now the fake to Haraway Warfield in the open for a moment and Rick Bolt broke it up Rick Bolt stayed with him he had help from behind from Jerry Logan but Warfield, Pat, for just a brief moment, had a few steps on Volk, and there's a flag down back upfield. You know, sometimes against the zone, here comes Warfield. It looks like a man is open, but he's just running into somebody else's zone. It appeared that he had a step on Volk, but Logan was coming over behind, as you probably saw. The penalty against Cleveland. We haven't had the call as yet. The yardage being marked off against the Browns, and penalties have hurt the Browns. This looks like holding. Takes the ball back to the 17. And it is a holding call against the Browns. They've got to come out to the 45 yard line for a first down. So it's a second down play and 27. And you might watch for a blitz here. No flag, even though. It there was movement. Here's Haraway being blasted at the 20 by Lenny Lyles. That Lyles is about as tough a hitter as there is in the game. He'll make you pay for it when you run into his territory. The ball out to the 22 makes it third down and still long yardage. Fred Miller on that last play almost went offside but got back on. You talk about Lyles. Lyles has been around a long time. 6'2 and 204 he is. Has good size. He's playing 11 years now. He's from Louisville. 
But in spite of the fact that he's played a long time and obviously taken a lot of punishment, he still has that great speed that he came out of college with. The ball at the 22. Third down and 22. Nelson is swarmed under and brought down by Ordell Bracey, number 81. Bracey fought off the block and still made the tackle. It'll be Shafrath blocking on Bracey as Bracey gets to the passer. Shafrath a fine tackle. Bracey, of course, another veteran who's been around a long time. And look at the strength he shows you right here as he gets away from Shafrath, runs into Hoagland, and finally, the four of them run into Nelson. So it's fourth down, and Timmy Brown is the single safety man as Cockroft does the punting. And a high kick carries to midfield, and Timmy Brown takes it at the Cleveland 48-yard line. We have 6-10 left in the third quarter. There's a timeout, and with the score, Baltimore 17 and Cleveland nothing. Let's pause for a moment. American Airlines would like to thank Calabasas, California, for Susan Bernath, stewardess. And I don't feel like I have to have a passenger letter to know that I did a good job. Just however they act, you can tell whether somebody's saying thank you just because that's the thing to say or whether they're saying it because they really mean it. It's kind of a warm feeling to know that they were on that plane for five hours and they didn't feel bored and feel like the movie was the only thing that kept them entertained in the meal. Well, I think you can make everybody happy if you try hard enough. It may take a while, it may take a little longer than it would if somebody that, that's in a good mood anyway. But uh, I think by the end of the flight you could bring anybody around. <laughs> Susan brings a little something extra to her job. That's the American way. Fly the American way. Fly with the people who love you. Six ten left in the third quarter. Pat Summer all alongside. I'm Jack Buck. The score is 17 to nothing, and Baltimore has the ball. First and ten at the Cleveland 48. Jimmy Orr goes to the left. Matty goes on a wing left, and Richardson splits right. John Mackey, the tight end, is on the right side. And Jerry Hill carries. Following a block by Matty, cuts inside and gets inside the 45 yard line. Dale Lindsay, the outside linebacker, and Bob Matheson, number 56, the middle linebacker, both got there. Pat, the passing statistics are not very impressive, and I'm sure the cold weather has something to do with it. Cold weather and the wind, I'm sure, too, Jack. It's Marl is 7 out of 20, and 0 for 5 here in the second half. That ball is hard to hold on to and hard to throw on a day like this. The ball is at the 44, second and 6 as Hill picked up 4 yards. Morrill on a draw to Hill. Hill is wrapped up and dropped. Kanicki, along with Snydo, making the defensive play. It'll be a third down play. And into the game comes Tom Mitchell, replacing Jerry Hill for the Colts. Which would very strongly indicate that uh, Morrill is going to put the ball in the air. Third down and about five and a half, it appears to be. Mitchell and Mackey are right together on the right side with Richardson out of your picture at the bottom. And the pass is caught by Mitchell who just come into the game. And that's going to be a first down. Jack Gregory, the second year man, number 81, was chasing Morrill. And Morrill did a remarkable job as Cleveland was looping that time. That's Kanicki going to the outside, Gregory to the inside, and they didn't pick it up. Marl does a good job to get away from this and still complete the pass. And he hit it to Tom Mitchell, the rookie from Bucknell, for a first down at the Cleveland 37. Mitchell is now out of there. And Orr is back into the game, wide left. Here comes Matty in motion, and the end around to Mackey, and they smell that one out. And Mackey is dropped for a loss. Well, the Browns were on the alert for that one. And Jack Gregory, whom we showed you pursuing a while ago, along with Dale Lindsay, the linebacker, brought Big John down on the far side of the field for a loss on the play of six yards. So second down and long yardage for the Colts. 
And this third quarter is rapidly slipping away from the Cleveland Browns who trail 17 to nothing. Second down 16. The fake draw. Morrow throwing long for Richardson, battling Barnes. Barnes couldn't find it, and Richardson does. And it's first and goal from the five. Barnes couldn't find the football. Barnes had his back to the passer in the early part of this pass play. It's underthrown a little bit, and I think if it hadn't been underthrown, it probably would not have been complete. Barnes has him covered and has him covered well. And you can see the ball was thrown behind. Uh, Richardson stopped and came back, and here it just couldn't stop soon enough. And as Baltimore sets up first and goal from the five-yard line, Tom Mitchell comes in, replacing Jimmy Orr. There was a penalty on that last play against Cleveland, and the penalty was, of course, declined by Baltimore. Baltimore, the Colts, trying to add to their 17 to nothing lead here. Tom Matty has scored twice in this game. Long count and a give to the second man through Matty. Got about half the distance. Waller Johnson tackled it. Looped around from behind and tackled him. With Jack Gregory cracking in on the play. Cleveland sends in Bill Glass, number 80, and Marvin Upshaw, number 84, as its second and goal from the two. 2.35 remaining in the third quarter and the clock running. But Richardson comes up with some big plays, Pat. He uh, was the one who really hurt Minnesota last week. A fantastic catch he made last week, diving between two men, and now he comes up with this one, which sets up Baltimore's field position right now. Matty scores for the third time today. Tom Matty, following Glenn Ressler and others, Sam Ball, Bill Curry, Dan Sullivan, scores for the third time today, making it 23 to nothing. Watch Matty as he follows Jerry Hill and the rest of his offensive line. Wrestler pulled behind Hill with the key block up front. And Matty in in good shape. Now Bobby Boyd holds and Lou Michaels will try to make it 24 to nothing. With 2.17 left in the third quarter. Boyd gets it down and Michaels gets it through. Baltimore 24. Cleveland nothing. We'll be back with the Colts kickoff in just a moment. Sometime soon, you're likely to see one of these cards. Meanwhile, we'd like to tell you about the man behind that card, your New York Life agent. For one thing, he's a full-time life insurance agent. That's his career. He was carefully chosen and thoroughly trained. What's more, he goes on studying so he can help you build a sound program of financial security. The more he knows about his business, the better he can serve you. Maybe that's why New York Life agents earn far more than their share of professional awards. We're proud of them, and they're proud of their company, one of the world's oldest, largest life insurance companies. Mr. Hewitt, come on in. That's the man behind the card your New York Life agent. He's a good man to know. That is Frank Ryan, number 13, who Bill Nelson replaced after the third game of this year. Nelson did an outstanding job, but it looks now like when Cleveland gets the ball after this kickoff, it will be the 11-year veteran from Rice, Frank Ryan. And the kickoff is by Michaels. He is kicking to Morrison and Ben Davis. And it goes into the end zone. It's still alive. And then it's down by Morris. Still a live ball when that little kid touched it. Here comes Ryan. Listen to the crowd. Ryan is a fellow whom the Cleveland crowd really got on during the year. And now they'll be rooting for him to try to do something about the 24-0 deficit. With 2.08 remaining in the third quarter, first and 10. Cleveland at their own 20. As we check how well Nelson did, he was 10 of 23, I believe. 10 of 26 for 126 yards. So Ryan fumbles the ball and Sinek recovers. 
Ryan on the first play fumbled, and Don Chinnick recovered the football. And Baltimore goes from the 20-yard line. Well, that's one of the things that happens when you make a change like that. He missed the center snap. Just a simple mistake like that puts Baltimore in position again to get on the scoreboard as Ryan and Hoagland just simply missed the exchange. There's Ryan. And it would be easy to try to figure out his personal feelings at this moment. So you do things to try to change things and other things happen. It's at the 20. Time is called as some debris is picked up off of the playing field. Some people had thrown some things onto the playing field and the players are around uh, in the in the end zone picking up the trash and throwing it out of the range of the football players. Hard to tell from up here just what has been thrown, but something that could hurt the players. So we'll get squared away and go from the 20-yard line. Meanwhile, I'd like to remind you again of the Mark Twain show to be seen Thursday on CBS. January 2nd at 7.30 Eastern Time, 6.30 Central Time. Al Holbrook's Mark Twain, a great show for the entire family. Make sure that the kids see that one, too. Matty starts in motion. They give it to him. He can throw, you know, but he's not going to. And he gets away from tacklers and picks up a couple of yards. He was looking for Richardson in the end zone, but Richardson had been double teamed. Remember the last time they ran that play? They gave it to Mackey on an end around in the opposite direction. Matty wanted to throw, but couldn't. Picked up two, second and eight. Another good example of why they call uh, Matty the garbage runner. Because it looked like he was down for a loss. He couldn't find a receiver, and all of a sudden he picked up a couple of yards. And he's been in the league now eight years from Ohio State. Konecki comes off the field, defensive tackle for the Browns. And Marv Upshaw, number 84, is there in his stead. As Konecki is being treated along the sideline. Richardson's to the left side with Orr. And Morrow gives the ball to Hill. Hill inside the 10. Hills at about the six-yard line, where it'll be first down and goal. And the Baltimore offensive line really ripping holes in the Cleveland defense, and they ran right at Upshaw, who had just committed the game. Pat. It didn't take them long to check him out. They've got uh, young men on that side, Cleveland does. Jack Gregory playing a right defensive end, and now Upshaw at right tackle. And as soon as they got situated, Baltimore went right at it. It's at the five, and it's first and goal to go. This will probably be the last play of the third quarter. Ten seconds left in the clock running. Mitchell is in there for Baltimore. There's Matty getting to the three-yard line. And the gun sounds ending the third quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. With a score, Baltimore 24 and Cleveland nothing. We pause now for station identification. Don Knotts is the incredible Mr. Limpet, and fun for the whole family is the forecast for the Friday night movies this week on CBS. Fifteen minutes of football remaining here in Cleveland. Baltimore leading 24 to nothing. Baltimore's ball, second and goal to go from the three, and Tom Matty is closing in on a record. Matty with three touchdowns has got 18 points. The record is 19 points in a championship game. That's by Paul Horning of Green Bay in 1961 against the Giants. Horning did it with one touchdown, four extra points, and three field goals. Matty has scored three touchdowns today, and Lou Michaels has kicked a 28-yard field goal. Wayne Malin is in there defensively for Cleveland as they 
set up this goal line stand. Earl Morrill had been to the sideline visiting with Don Shula. Tight T with the exception of Richardson, who's left. A long count and a keeper by Morrill, and no gain. It'll be third and goal as they sent both Hill and Matty on the fake to the left, and Morrill tried to roll in there with it. It'll be a third down and goal. Quite a tangle of players inside the five yard line. The last to get up is Bob Bogle, number 72. That appeared to be just a missed handoff. I don't believe it was designed for Morrill to carry the football. Looked like he was trying to give it to Matty, but Matty wasn't expecting it. By the way, as we're talking about Tom, he has tied a record for the most touchdowns scored in one game. Three. The record held by two Cleveland players, Otto Graham in 1954 and Gary Collins against Baltimore in 1964. From two and a half yards out, now Mackey splits to the outside. And Morrill throws for six to Mackey, and he's missed the ball. Jim Houston, the linebacker, was covering there, and the ball was nicely thrown by Morrill, but Mackey missed it, and now a field goal situation. Fourth and goal from two and a half. Houston just barely gets a hand up, and I think obstructs Mackey's view so that he can't see the ball coming. I don't believe Houston really hit it. Mackey is open early. So Houston took one swipe at it, and then Mackey missed it. Boyd holding, and Lou Michaels trying to kick his second field goal of the game from the 10. And he makes it good. So the score amounts to 27 to nothing in favor of the Colts. Well, this was the score when Cleveland beat Baltimore in 1964. By the way, the Baltimore Colts band is on hand, and... There aren't many Baltimore rooters in this huge stadium, but the Baltimore band has been whooping it up. They made the trip over here, and they see their Chargers out in front 27 to nothing. Tommy McDonald goes deep on the goal line. He's the one with uh, no sweatshirt on underneath. And Reese Morrison, number 26, is closest to her. Is that Davis? That is Ben Davis at the top of the screen. I thought it was McDonald in there. Here's Michaels kicking off with 14.05 remaining in the game. Waiting for the referee's signal to go. There's the whistle from the end zone. And Michaels kicks a line drive that Davis handles at the 3. 10, 15. And again, that good coverage by Baltimore. They seem to do everything right, and they continue to do it. Pat, this is a team that makes very few mistakes. Very few, not only on their offense and defense unit, but uh, on their special teams as well. That time again, it was Preston Pearson who was down leading the charge. The crowd reacts as Frank Ryan goes in to quarterback the Browns from the 18-yard line. Twenty-seven to nothing, Baltimore. Thirteen thirty-four remaining in the game. Ryan to the air for the first time. A flag is thrown, and Ryan throws the long one for Warfield. Interference. But there's a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Lenny Lyles collided with Warfield, but they're coming back the other way. No doubt about it either as Lyles is protesting, but you can see him collide right there with Warfield as Warfield made a slight outside move, but it's going to be called back. The line of scrimmage was the 18. A flag was thrown as Ryan dropped back. Infraction is against Cleveland. Penalties have really hurt them today. Uh, not so much in total yardage, but they have come at very inopportune times. Very key situations. Cleveland's had some first downs that have been called back, and they've taken them out of field goal range a couple of times, too. With backfield in motion against Cleveland. And the penalty was accepted. Ernie Green is in there now at fullback, number 48, for the Browns with Leroy Kelly. We must have had offsetting penalties on that last play, Jack, because it's still first and 10. Right you are. Here's the pass to Morin, crossing the 25-yard line. 
On the pitch from Ryan with Mike Curtis, the first to get to him, and Rick Volk and Dennis Gaubatz also in on the action. Well, they were offsetting penalties on our last action. So now it's second down and one. Clock is running. We have exactly 13 minutes remaining. Ball out to the 27-yard line. Ernie Green, by the way, is a good pass receiver. He's in the pattern. And Ryan is dumped. The whistle hasn't blown. Kelly picked up the football, and Boyd gets him from behind. And Kelly is down for a loss on the play. Ordell Bracey was the first man to hammer Frank Ryan. Shook the ball loose, a fumble, and Kelly picked it up and got back to the 21. You'll see Bracey hit Ryan. Ryan looking downfield, looking first for Collins and looking then to go to the safety valve receiver. Now he didn't quite have possession of the ball as Bracey hit him in the back first. Kelly picks it up. He probably wishes he didn't. He had boy. Bobby Boyd looking right at him. And so it's third down and six now. An important play for Cleveland. Ryan straight back. Morin caught the football, and that's a first down. With Bobby Boyd on top of him, Walt Morin, Milt Morin, hauled it in. 11.40 remaining in the game. Cleveland's ball at their own 32. No scoring in the first quarter, and then Baltimore got 17 points in the second quarter. Seven in the third, and a field goal here in the fourth period. Ryan throws a pass that is deflected and incomplete. On New Year's Day, which is Wednesday, CBS will bring you the Cotton Bowl game. Texas and Tennessee at 1.45 Eastern Time, live and in color on CBS. And, Pat, they're talking about that big Texas offense, a great backfield against a stout Tennessee defense. Tennessee also has got some outstanding offensive weapons. It's always an interesting game. Texas has an outstanding bowl record, as you know. And on the other hand, Tennessee hasn't done too well in the bowls, but perhaps New Year's Day in the Cotton Bowl. You'll see it on CBS. Bubba Smith is out of there defensively for Baltimore with Roy Hilton replacing him. Second down play, second and ten. Baltimore fakes the blitz. And the pass incomplete to Morin. They faked the blitz and went into a straight four-man rush. And Don Shinnick was covering on the pass play. A third down call coming up. Getting dark here at the stadium. The lights have been on from the outset. Temperature near the 20 mark. And the Colts lead the Browns 27 to nothing. I imagine that some of the Jets are watching the game, Pat. Our congratulations to Weeb Eubank and the New York team. I would imagine uh, right in their locker room. They're still there watching on television. There's a third down play, third and ten. Green is the lone setback. Ryan is hit by Bracey once again. He wanted to throw, but Mike Curtis was covering the would-be receiver, who was Gary Collins. And Ordell Bracey made another hit, and Roy Hilton came along and helped keep Frank Ryan down back at the 25. And it's fourth down and 16. Cockcroft is in to punt, and Timmy Brown is back to receive. Brown has just been activated. And he replaced Gail Cogdill, who is not on the active roster for Baltimore. A high punt and a fair catch. And Timmy Brown fumbles it but fell on it. That's the second time he's done it today. Back at the 33-yard line. We have 10.46 remaining. There's a timeout. And with the score, Baltimore 27, Cleveland nothing. Let's pause for a moment. Hello, I'm Harry Landers. You know, for years I've been strictly a fresh perk coffee man. Fresh perk was all I liked and all I drank. That's why when the Nestle Company asked me to try their new Tasters Choice freeze-dried coffee, I didn't expect much. 
Well, I don't like to admit that an old diehard coffee man like me was fooled. But this coffee looks, smells, and tastes fresh perked. It's that good. And when I asked them how they did it, they showed me this. They start with real fresh perk coffee. Next, they freeze it. Then they vacuum away the ice, dry. What's left are crystals of pure coffee, freeze dried. All you do is put back boiling water for a real good cup of coffee. Quick, coffee that tastes fresh perked. Try Taster's Choice freeze dried coffee with a man tasting coffee on the label. Taster's Choice, you'll like it. There's Don Shula along the sideline. His team, the Colts, out in front 27 to nothing with 10.46 remaining in the game. Earl Morrill at quarterback, first and 10 from his own 33. Morrill gives to Matty. Try to get outside, came back inside, and had to work hard for a couple of yards. Well, it's unusual when you have Baltimore in a championship game, Pat, that we haven't been able to mention Johnny Unitas since the game started. has been Morrill all the way. But I'm sure that Unitas, uh, as he stands on the sideline, looking at what's, what's taking place on the field, has been a great help to Morrill. In fact, every time you talk to Earl, that's the first thing he says, is that Unitas has helped him so much. And uh, his theories of how to attack a defense and just uh, about evaluating Baltimore's personnel as well. You can imagine now that Baltimore will stay on the ground as much as they can without losing momentum. Matty picks up three. And picks up additional yardage, and he bangs to the 45-yard line, and that's going to be a first down with Dale Lindsay making the final stop for Cleveland, and that Matty is having some kind of a running day. Matty a little bit slow in getting up, and he heads for the sideline, and down to his knees he goes, and Matty is hurting. Tom Matty belted on that last tackle is down on the sideline and being tended to and we'll get word as soon as we can with regard to the apparent injury. We can tell you that he's carried 16 times for 86 yards as he departs. First down from the 45. Here's Morrow with the inside handoff to Hill who gets five. Bill Glass, number 80, stopped him. 9-10 left in the game. Actually, Hill got to the 49, so it'll be second and six. This is quite in contrast to the Baltimore attack we saw last week against Minnesota. They had great difficulty running against the Vikings and had to resort to almost strictly a passing attack. The field conditions could have had something to do with it. Today, they haven't been able to throw it that well, but the running attack has been getting the yards for them. Second and six. There's Timmy Brown, who replaced Matty, getting down to the Cleveland 46-yard line. Along the sideline, Johnny Unitas. He's pretty happy about the whole thing as the Colts lead 27 to nothing. A great guy. And without doubt, a great quarterback. We pause five seconds for station identification. Third down and a yard for the Colts, and Tom Mitchell is in a tight end along with John Mackey. Hill and Brown in the backfield. And the fake to Brown. Third down. The pass to Richardson. He caught the ball. Barnes brings him down inside the 20-yard line. And shades of Unitas and Bart Starr with a third down call by Earl Morrill. Just sort of had a feeling that he was going to fake the run and throw to Richardson, who was wide open early. But Barnes made a great recovery to even get over close to him by the time he caught the ball. First down. Tom Matty along the sideline is no longer down on the deck. He's up on his feet and being treated. And uh, it's, well, I don't even want to guess, but it appears it might be a jaw injury or something of the sort to the upper torso. We'll check it out for you further. The ball's on the 19. Jimmy Orr is back in there for Baltimore. He's to the left side. And Jerry Hill. Bangs to the vicinity of the 15-yard line with Marv Upshaw, number 84, and Bill Glass, number 80, stopping him. And the clock is now telling a story against Cleveland. Seven minutes remaining. New York defeated Oakland for the American Football League Championship, 
So they're in the Super Bowl on the 12th of January. And this game will determine their opponent. Second down and seven. Timmy Brown. Gained only a yard or so. Brown has been hampered all year with muscle pulls. And he's seen very little action. He just activated this week. Matheson made that tackle. Into the game for the first time now for Baltimore is Terry Cole at fullback. Number 34. He replaces Jerry Hill. Cole's a rookie from Indiana, and he did a great job when Hill missed quite a few games because of an injury. Third and six. Morrow looks for Cole, who had just come into the game. He caught the ball, and Bob Matheson hauled him down from behind. Again, another look at Tom Matty. And there is Tom, and he appears to have bounced back pretty well from the injury, whatever it was. It's a fourth down play now for the Colts. Fourth and four. And Lou Michaels attempts his third field goal of the day. This would also tie a championship game record of the most in one game. Three. Bobby Boyd spots the ball. Flags are down, and the ball hits the upright. Now let's see what the flag is all about. If it's against Cleveland, it probably will be a first down. If it's against Baltimore, why well, Cleveland will get the ball on the 20. It's going to be a first down for Baltimore as the penalty is marked off against the Browns with 5.09 remaining. It was fourth and four. And it takes the ball to the eight. First and goal. And here's the call. Offside and attempting to block the field goal. We talk quite a bit about this Baltimore offensive unit. What an outstanding job they have done today. And indeed they have. But the, uh, the Baltimore defense as well. You might recall during the regular season they had three shutouts. And in 10 of their 14 games they had allowed their opponents only one touchdown. And they have a shutout going here. That's Cole running with the ball inside the five yard line to the four. Terry Cole. With Jim Houston the linebacker on that outside number 82 stopping it. Into the game on the line is John Williams first year man from Minnesota number 75 offensively for Baltimore. Tom Mitchell into the game Jimmy or out a lot of quite a few of the Colts saying a lot of action. Tom Matty says tells us up here he's all right. He was belted in the ribs and the wind knocked out of it. But Tom says he feels all right now and that's good news. The ball's on the four and it's second and goal. Four and a half minutes remaining in the game. Timmy Brown into the end zone. Timmy Brown, who knows how to find pay dirt, even though he hasn't played much this year, danced in from four yards out. And again, excellent blocking by the Baltimore offensive line. Let's take another look at Dan Sullivan as he will pull and come into your picture. Wrestler Curry is the center, number 50. Here comes wrestler 62 with a block on Walter Johnson. And Timmy Brown into the end zone behind another fine effort. John Williams, who just moved in at left tackle for Baltimore, also with a key block. Boyd holding and Michaels kicking, trying to make it 34 to nothing. Baltimore 34, Cleveland nothing, and back with the Baltimore kickoff in just a moment. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should cause it's what's up front that counts and up front ahead of the filter only Winston has the good good taste that comes from filter blend filter blend means fine tobaccos for the best taste yet that's why Winston is America's largest selling cigarette up front, only Winston has filter blend. Choice golden tobaccos for the best taste in modern filter smoking. Yes, Winston tastes good like a cigarette. 
cigarette should, like your cigarette should. Winston! There's Timmy Brown, who just scored the TD, his first of the year, to make it 34 to nothing here. He's a happy fellow. He's another one who happened to be in the right place at the right time, as he was traded just before the year started for Alvin Heyman. Morrison and Davis are deep, and the ball is taken by Morrison. He's at the 20-yard line, 25, 30, and a good return by Reese Morrison, the rookie from Southwest Texas. Now we have 4:02 left in the football game, and these will be long minutes for the Cleveland club, Pat. And if you're a Cleveland fan, uh, you should be encouraged by something we learned last night, something which surprised me very much, that next to the Atlanta Falcons, the average age of the Cleveland Browns is the youngest of any team in the NFL. And for a contending team as they are to be in a championship game as they are and still be next to the youngest team is very encouraging for the future, I think. They're on their own 33 with a first down. Frank Ryan still in their quarterback, and he wings it out here, and it is almost picked off by Charlie Stooks, number 47, who would have picked up six more quick points. Charlie Stooks, the second-year man from Maryland State, was right there and dropped the football as Baltimore puts in numerous personnel who had not played previously. We're looking at Frank Ryan in the Cleveland huddle. In there defensively for Baltimore, Sid Williams at outside linebacker, number 64. Roy Hilton at the left defensive end. Second down and 10 from their own 33 for Cleveland. And nothing doing on the running play to Ernie Green. We have 350 left in the game. Lou Michaels is in there playing at the line of scrimmage, which he hasn't done much this year, Pat. But Lou has been a fine defensive lineman throughout his career. This is actually the second year that he's done very little but kick. Here's a defensive end and a good one for Pittsburgh, for the Rams, and for Baltimore. A third down play, third and eight from the Cleveland 35. Ryan needs eight yards, and the ball is batted up into the air by Hilton, number 85. And it's fourth down. And it stops the clock with 317 remaining. So Ryan has not had much more success, if as much as Bill Nelson, who started the game for the Browns. And if you're possibly wondering about one-sided victories, we are nowhere close. That is Don Shula, of course, the Baltimore coach, and the most successful of all of the active coaches in the NFL. And this year is an NFL coach of the year. The most one-sided championship game, of course, was the famous 73 to nothing game. The Chicago Bears over the Washington Redskins. Don Cockroft kicking the football. Timmy Brown waiting for it. Calls for a fair catch. And downs the ball at the Baltimore 31. With 3.08 left in the football game. And quite a few of the 80,000 fans heading for home on a cold day in Cleveland. The thermometer reading was not so tough. Didn't get below the 20 mark. But a lot of wind today made it uncomfortable. We have 2.55 remaining. Next Saturday, CBS begins its weekly National Hockey League telecast, continuing through the completion of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Here comes Timmy Brown, cutting back inside, getting out beyond the 35-yard line. With regard to our hockey telecast on CBS next Saturday, Chicago Blackhawks meet Montreal at 4 Eastern time, live and in color with Dan Kelly and Bill Mazur telling you the story. And there's Earl Morrill along the sideline. What a year he has had, Pat, with one wow. more game to go. Fantastic year. I can't tell if it's Unitas or a young Jim Ward who's the quarterback. Jim Ward. It is Ward, yes. Number 16 is a second-year man from Gettysburg, 6'2", 195. He's had very little playing time, but he gets an opportunity, and now the two-minute warning is being given to both benches. With the score, Baltimore 34 and Cleveland nothing. Let's pause for a moment. I know something you don't know. This is the new Mustang Sports Group. 
Oh, you know it already. Well, I'll find something else then. Here's something that's really something else. The all-new Mustang Mach 1 for 1969 with a pulsating functional hood scoop that takes in air and turns out instant acceleration. Mustang Mach 1, the wildest Mustang ever made. Completely new from the rear deck spoiler to the dual headlights and blackout grille. Now that's what I call a real nose job. Mach 1 with an optional 428 Cobra Jet V8 that starts the hood scoop quivering to deliver extra power. Mustang Mach 1 for 1969. Mach it to me, Mach it to me! Get a Mustang and you'll drive the girls cuckoo. Ford gives you better ideas. Baltimore's ball on their own 37. They lead 34 to nothing, and Jim Ward is at quarterback. He gives the ball to Terry Cole. Cole crosses the 40-yard line, and Marvin Upshaw tackled him. Cleveland has all three of their timeouts remaining, but we don't know how anxious they'll be to stop the clock with the score 34 to nothing as it is. 145 left in the football game. That's a Baltimore first down. And a couple more running plays, or three or four, as long as that clock keeps running. It's just exactly what Jim Ward and Baltimore would like to do. 130 left now. If Cleveland doesn't stop the clock, Baltimore will not give up the football. Timmy Brown and Terry Cole are the setbacks for Baltimore. And a give to Timmy Brown. He follows Johnson, the guard, and gets only a couple of yards. Cornelius Johnson, number 61, was in your picture. First-year man from Virginia Union, one of the high draft choices of Baltimore. And now, with the clock running, we have exactly one minute remaining in this National Football League championship game from Cleveland. Baltimore led at halftime 17 to nothing. In the American Football League, New York defeated Oakland for the title 27-23. Cleveland not stopping the clock. It continues. It's a second down play, second and eight from their own 43. Straight ahead is Cole. Cole drives beyond the 45 yard line and that will be the last play of the game unless Cleveland stops the clock. Bob Matheson made that last tackle. Baltimore not anxious to run any more plays. And you can see the time remaining. They have 30 seconds between plays without drawing a penalty. And the gun south. The Baltimore Colts are the champions of the National Football League. And there is Don Schuler, the winning coach. One of his good friends, one of his best friends in the business, is Blanton Collier, a wonderful gentleman who is the head coach of the Cleveland Browns. And the two shake hands at midfield. The final score was 34 to nothing as Baltimore won it convincingly. Just as Cleveland left no doubt when they defeated Dallas a week ago Saturday, Baltimore leaves no doubt here today, Pat. Not at all. Baltimore, except for one brief, brief flurry right after the start of the second half, had Cleveland completely in command. And there go the 1968 goalpost from Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. Lou Michaels had two field goals. Tom Matty scored three touchdowns. Timmy Brown had the other. And certainly... As we view fellows uh, like Bill Glass, number 80, going off the field, certainly in the Super Bowl on the 12th of January, the National Football League is going to be well represented in the persons of the Baltimore Colts as they would have been had Cleveland won this game today. Every time we have seen Baltimore this year, which has been quite a few, they've been able to take charge of things almost from the outset. That Super Bowl game also, Jack, uh, presents a very interesting confrontation between Don Shula. And the man who preceded him at Baltimore, Weeb Eubank, now the head coach of the New York Jets. We're going to be able to go right into the Baltimore Colts dressing room with our CBS cameras, and so you can view the post-game celebration, however hectic or non-hectic it turns out to be. We'll also have highlights of this game and highlights of the American Football League championship game as well with, with Tom Brookshire, your host. And... 34 to nothing. And as you view the scene on the field, Cleveland Brown fans, I'm sure, 
Got a lot of enjoyment out of their football team this year, which won their Century Division title with their record of 10 and 4. And this would be Baltimore's third NFL championship. They beat the Giants in 1958 in that famous sudden death game, 59, and now here in 1968. Let's go down to Tom Brookshire in CBS Control. All right, thank you very much. You people will, of course, know the score is 34 to nothing. The Baltimore Colts completely overwhelming the Cleveland Browns. They use fantastic defense. A guy named Tom Matty, who, by the way, is from Shaw High School in Cleveland, but there won't be any ticker tape parade for Tom Matty in Cleveland tonight. 34 to nothing. The Colts certainly the cream of the crop in the National Football League, and they will go in the Super Bowl against the amazing New York Jets with Broadway Joe Namath. That score this afternoon at Shea Stadium was 27-23. The Oakland Raiders, a fine big football team that played the Green Bay Packers real well a year ago, but they couldn't handle the New York Jets this afternoon. Let's go to Shea Stadium and look at some of the highlights now as Joe Namath and company, the Jets, did beat the Oakland Raiders 27-23. In the first quarter now, you'll see Daryl LaMonica going across the middle to Fred Blintnikoff, his fine flanker, number 25. You'll see this on an isolated replay now as Blintnikoff actually curls up against the zone, hugs the ball a little bit, gets rid of Johnny Sample, and then goes into the end zone. Number 25 is dangerous, but this was a jet day. The New York Jets won it. Joe Namath, Mr. Quarterback, in white shoes, bad knees but a great right arm. Number 12, going deep for Don Maynard, an over-the-shoulder grab in the corner going away, and it's down inside the 10-yard line. That was a 40-yarder to the 12. Namath again from rather a tight formation gets in trouble by a pretty good linebacker rush but puts the feet, plants them and rifles the ball to Don Maynard for a 12-yard touchdown pass. As we said, the final score was the New York Jets 27, the Raiders 23. We're going to be in this dressing room just a little bit later on after Don Shula and Carol Rosenblum and the different Baltimore people have talked to this great football team and of course when we get a chance we'll barge our way in and try to find out, like you, the TV fan, what really happened and what really went on in that great Baltimore victory this afternoon. We do know one thing, though. The Jets will be waiting. And Miami for Super Bowl time, it will be the New York Jets and the tough Baltimore Colts. 34-0, the victors over the Cleveland Browns. And for you people that are Brown fans, and there are millions of you across the nation, don't feel sorry for this ball club. They hit, they never stopped, and they were gang tackling just as hard in the fourth period as they were in the first period. But simply a question of getting on the scoreboard, and this isn't the first time that a team hasn't been able to score on the Baltimore Colts. The Colts are tremendous on defense, and I think they make you pay just too terrific a price to get on that scoreboard. Actually, later on this evening, you're going to see a, quite a show here on CBS. It's going to be called the, the All-Pro Show, and we're going to take a look now at part of this. You'll be seeing at 6 o'clock. We'll be seeing that just a little bit later on. That's when Chuck... Uh, a fellow named Chuck Bednarik talks to Charlton Heston about the great all-pro football players that you've seen on CBS and, of course, on the NFL football uh, field this season. They're putting up the stats right now. We can see that uh, we can't go over there quite yet. The men are working. But Baltimore did have 22 first downs. Cleveland had but 12. And, of course, as soon as those are ready, we will be able to swing across. Let's go back upstairs for just a moment as we clear the air down here to Jack Buck. And checking a scoring summary, we had a scoreless first period in this football game with a tough defensive battle and the Browns carrying on the very same momentum that they possessed a week ago when they defeated Dallas to win the Eastern Conference crown. But then in the second quarter, Lou Michaels kicked a field goal from 28 yards out for the first points of the game. Then Tom Maddy scored the first of his three touchdowns from one foot out. Maddy scored again from 11 yards out, and the score was 17 to nothing at halftime. Matty again scored from two yards out. And then Lou Michaels, a 10-yard field goal, his second field goal of the day, and Timmy Brown had the honor of racking up the final TD. Well, Tom Brookshire re referred to that all-pro show that's going to be coming along about 35 minutes from now. And this is what he was talking about with Charlton Heston hosting the show and in this circumstance, visiting with Chuck Bednarik. Interesting, Chuck, from the point of view of your old position, just why is a good linebacker important to a team? Well, Chuck, the core of any good football team is the defense. And the core of any defense is the linebacker. I don't 
think linebackers have straight noses. I think linebackers have crooked noses, noses which cover their face. Oh, there's a lot of good-looking linebackers, I mean, but their noses will show that they're football players because you've got to really stick your nose in at every play. A linebacker only has to worry about everything. He has to range long distances to stop the play. He must have the cunning of a fortune teller and the speed and power of the back secret too. A linebacker is a type of a kid who loves to hit. A person who probably, you take his heart out from here and you put it in his belly and you call it guts. A kid that just likes to mix it up on every plate. That's a little preview of the outstanding show you'll see at CBS this evening after we leave the Cleveland Stadium here, and we have a good deal more to show you, including a visit in the Baltimore Colts dressing room where the scene should be a very, very bright one as the Colts go on to the Super Bowl against the New York Jets on the 12th of January. To do a little rehashing here, you'll recall it was October 20th when Cleveland defeated Baltimore in Baltimore by the score of 30-20. to 20. But then the Colts using that uh, particular loss for a springboard, went on to win nine in a row, and that was then their drive was culminated here today as they won their 10th consecutive victory after vanquishing Minnesota in the contest one week ago in Baltimore. And for you Baltimore fans, we're sorry that you weren't able to be on hand here in Cleveland, although uh, you wouldn't have been uh, as comfortable as you've ever been in your life because it was windy and cold here, but we hope you enjoyed the telecast on CBS as you watched your Colts go on to the National Football League championship game. We have some statistics to show you and uh, you can see how the final score evolved as a result of these particular figures with Baltimore leading in first downs total yardage almost uh, well more than doubling the figure of the Cleveland Browns the rushing yardage and you can see that Cleveland did very little despite the fact they had the great Leroy Kelly who led the National Football League in rushing this year, Cleveland gained only 56 yards overall. They had to go through the air to make most of their yardage, 117 to 169. They almost matched Baltimore in that particular department. But look at the passing figures, 11 out of 25 for Earl Morrill and 13 out of 32 for the combination of Bill Nelson, who started the game, and Frank Ryan, who then took over. And uh, Baltimore did not have the ball that many more times than the Browns did. And the interceptions, I believe that uh, particular figure is wrong because Mike Curtis intercepted one for Baltimore, as did Rick Bulk in the football game, and Ben Davis had one. I think the figures are reversed as Davis intercepted one for Cleveland. But Cleveland lost a big fumble, as did uh, Baltimore, and that fumble by Cleveland was just when Frank Ryan came into the game, you'll recall. First play from scrimmage, he missed the center snap from Fred Hoagland, and it's uh, indicative of some of the treacheries that come about as you try to shake things up in a football game as Ryan and his center whom he has worked with so many times just didn't make connections on the snap and then Baltimore went on in for another score and it was about that time that the game got out of hand from the Cleveland Browns. During the game we referred to the fact that well in fact I used to live here in Cleveland and I've known some of the sports excitement that uh, prevailed here with the Rams before they went to Los Angeles in other sports uh, it's a good hockey town and they've had some great baseball years but they tell me that this year was the greatest sports fever ever shown by the fandom here in the Cleveland area. They really took to the Browns for the way they uh, went on after beating Baltimore 30 to 20 and the wonderful things that they accomplished with the winning of the Century Division crown. And then, of course, knocking off Dallas, which was a team heavily favored when they came into the game here one week ago yesterday. And this was the field where they defeated the Dallas Cowboys and left no doubt that on that particular day, they were much better than the Dallas team. And in fact, they were so good that they had a good many people, had a good many people thinking that they were going to beat Baltimore here today, but it didn't turn out to be that way. This is Jack Buck reminding you to stay tuned as the NFL Today continues with Pro Football Report. The NFL Championship was brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. The place to go to see what's going on.
and by New York Life Insurance Company and your local New York Life agent. And by the American Oil Company and its dealers who remind you that you expect more from American and you get it. And by Winston Filter Cigarettes. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. A lot of people might have thought the Baltimore Colts were very confident, maybe even a little smug coming in. They wouldn't be very happy to have this great championship under their belt. But as you can hear, they are extremely happy. There's a lot of backslapping going on, and this is a great football team's great dressing room. They're very happy to have won the National Football League title, and they can't wait to get at the New York Jets and Mr. Joe Namath. We'll be back in just a moment here in this Baltimore dressing room as the NFL Today continues on Pro Football Report. The minute you walked in the joint, I could see you were a man of distinction, a real big spender, good looking, so refined. I figured that you're the Muriel cigar smoking kind, so let me get right to the point. You're right in style when you're in Muriel's company. The final score was 34 to nothing. On my right, I have Earl Morrill, certainly the Duke of Baltimore, the great quarterback that's come on to do such a great job for the Baltimore Colts. And Tom Matty, whom we're going to get to in just a minute. But Earl, uh, after 13 years, and I'm not going to say knocking around because you were always an excellent quarterback, but surely you did find the place, uh, the Baltimore place, huh? Yes, it's true, Tom. It's a great team to be with. Uh, coaches, everybody, it's, it's just tremendous. Uh, I think uh, you just can't compliment them enough. Uh, and I'm just happy to be here, really. Uh, 13 years, uh, you know, 13 is supposed to be unlucky, but this has been the luckiest for me. I can say that. Earl, I think one of the most deceptive things about your ball club, and I'm going to accuse Don Shula of this later, is that he keeps letting people say you can't move the ball on the ground and you don't have a good running game. And and yet this fellow to your right scored three touchdowns, had over 80 yards rushing, and actually you came in with over a four-yard average uh, per running back. So you do move the ball on the ground pretty well, don't you? Well, I talked to him before I come down and told him a little bit about running, but uh, <laughs> not really. He's, he's a worker. He just keeps working at it, scrambling, and uh, he did some fancy stepping out there in the one. He went out and back out the corner and made the touchdown. You can't. These uh, runners, both of them, Jerry Hill, Tom Matty, they, they do a tremendous job. One blocks for the other. Uh, Get a little crack, and he'll pick up some yards for you. That's the most valuable player, Earl Morrill, and Tom Matty, who might be the most valuable player in this game. Uh, Tommy, well, you're from Cleveland. Uh, right. you, I don't think the people downtown would be too happy with you today. Not particularly right now, but the one thing I do want to do say, Tom, is that our offensive line and did a, just a fantastic job, and Jerry Hill back in there, fullback from good old Wyoming, just blew him out today, and our off offensive running game was just fantastic, and, it, and it's all through the credit of a – a great coaching staff and a great team. Were you badly hurt when they uh, hauled you out? Well, I don't really know yet. I'm going to have to get some x-rays on my back, and we'll see what happens. But I got a good shot in the back, and it's pretty sore right now. All right, Tom, Matty. Earl, let's stick around for just a minute and roll some of these highlights. And I thought you went to a lot of quick draw stuff against Cleveland, like you might have been anticipating a, a big over rush by them. Well, they are, their front four is big, and I was expecting a lot of uh, pressure from them. That's we a went to that's a quick uh, down and in pattern to Jimmy Orr. Tried it a little bit later. A little behind him. I missed him on it. Just another one here. Uh, 
is a double way. Now, notice you did a flip-flop. You put both Richardson and Orr on one side and Mackey all by himself at times, too. Huh? Yes, this is true. We did, uh, did a lot of that. Uh, we were having success, so we stuck with it. That one I hit uh, Willie Richardson there. He Here's made a, a good catch time. on it. You fake the draw just to get him off your back. Just is trying to slow the line down a little bit. Willie makes a great catch there. Uh, he did it uh, last week for us, and uh, he did it again today. Come up with that clutch catch, the, the one that you need to get you down the goal line, and uh, can't say enough. Uh, he comes up with it. Earl, we're going to have uh, John Unitas just mentioned, too. Uh, uh, this is your year, the MVP year, everything. You're the NFL's best football player this year, but... For a dozen years, John Unitas has been quite a player, hasn't he? He has been tremendous. I've seen him play. I know what he can do, and uh, he's tops in my book. Uh, all I can say, uh, all year long, he's uh, been tremendous, helping me out where, where he can. Uh, we talk quite a bit on the sidelines. We talk formations. Uh, he's a great individual. He'll do anything he can. He, he did all he can to help the team, and uh, I know without his injury, he'd have been playing a lot of ball. So. Uh, I can't say enough about him. He, he is tremendous. Earl, are you getting ready, and are you looking forward to, of course, the money doesn't look bad going down to the Super Bowl, but how about the New York Jets? Do you like to team up against Joe Namath? Oh, yeah. Uh, you might as well play the best, and uh, I think they got the, one of the top teams over there, and uh, being in uh, New York uh, for a few years with Joe Namath, hearing a lot about him, uh, I'm anxious to uh, go down and play against him. Our congratulations and our thanks to both of you, Tom Maddie and, of course, Earl Morrill for coming by. Tom, Eddie, thank, thank you for you, coming by. Thank and you're you very coming much. back in just a moment. I've right. just uh, been informed. That's right. We'll be back now with more in this Cleveland and Baltimore dressing room in just a moment as the NFL Today continues. 28 years ago, your father was pacing the floor waiting for you. Ah, but you've changed a lot since then. We're John Hancock, and we feel when your life changes, so should your life insurance. Two, two, three, John Hancock is the fastest growing major life insurance company in America, and so who would know more about change than we? You remembered to make your new bride your new beneficiary, but now, now that you're about to have a family, is your old insurance still enough insurance? A Hancock man can update your life insurance coverage to keep up with your changing life. So whenever something changes, congratulations. Now call John Hancock, the growing and changing life insurance company for your growing and changing life. John Hancock, huh? On my right is Tom Matty, the fine all-around garbage ball carrier. That's what Pat Summerall called you. He said you just get away with murder. And on my left, one of the great flankers that's really come into his own the past two years, Willie Richardson. Uh, Willie, uh, Erich Barnes is tough man to man, and it looked like you and he had four or five head-to-head -head, uh, confrontations, and uh, I guess Erich gives you a pretty tough day. Almost yes, tough it is. He did, Tom. Uh, he kind of played like I thought he would play. Uh, on the first half, I had a pattern that I could have beaten him on, but I flipped down. I couldn't get up, but uh, we worked a few patterns out, and uh, Erich was throwing the ball very good, and I got open a couple times. Willie, uh, you're going to go against Johnny Sample. Now, uh, I know John Sample, and so do you. You're going to run into another tough nut in that Super Bowl, aren't you? I tell you, the only difference between uh, Johnny Sample and Eric Barnes is that uh, I think Johnny talks a little more. Uh, he's a good ball player. I played against him when he was at Washington. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him, and the uh, only thing I can say is it should be a good contest. Willie, this football team you play on, uh, what a super bunch of football players, huh? Well, there's no question about that. Uh, we don't have uh, many individual stars, as you know, but I think it's a team effort. All the guys are sticking close together, and everybody's pulling for everybody else, even the guys who are not playing regularly. And I think this is the difference in this club this year because everybody's all out. How about your end coach, uh, one of the real fast, uh, depth guys uh, at getting away from people, Dick Bielski. Uh, did he teach you a lot? Does he I work think with you? Dick Bielski has done, has done a tremendous job uh, with John Mackey and myself and even Tom Mitchell, Jimmy or Ray Perkins. He's done a great job. Uh, he played in the league himself, and uh, he knows the moves. And the uh, only thing I can do is do what he tells me to do, and I'll get open. Willie Richardson, number 87, as we said, the Pro Bowl flanker last year. And, Willie, you're heading back again, aren't you? That's right. All right, let's uh, go now to Bill Nelson and Pat Summerall. Well, I think uh, this has to be a sad occasion, of course, for Bill Nelson, but I think if you look back uh, at the kind of year he's had and the Browns have had, uh, certainly it's a sadness that won't last throughout the year at least. Uh, it's one that you'll remember, though, Bill, I think a long time, won't you? Pat, I'm afraid so. I just hope we learned an awful lot today. What do you think, uh, quickly, what is your appraisal now that you've had two chances to look at the Baltimore Colts? What do you think of them as a football team? Obviously, they're a fine team. Tremendous football team. They play football together, and uh, 
hustle all the time. Uh, this was a big difference in our game today. I don't think we had that real uh, drive out there today. Of course, some things happened to us, but Baltimore played a tremendous football game. They, they just played together, which does an awful lot for them. Did they do anything that you did not expect? Not really. They they used a lot less zone for me. I kept calling those zone patterns, mm -hmm. and they uh, kept playing man for man. And uh, So this is the only thing they did a little different on us. What do you think, uh, as you look at the Cleveland Brown team, we made the point uh, during the telecast today that uh, this is, next to Atlanta, the youngest team in the league. What do you see as the future for the Cleveland Browns now? Well, uh, as it is the second youngest team, we hope it's a tremendous future. We have some age at different positions that... Uh, but the, I'm sure everybody will be back, and uh, then they'll probably get people to help. But uh, we have a team that I, I especially think our defensive team that just played together all year and did a tremendous job, which gave us the ball all year, will improve that much more, and our offense will do the same. What about uh, the Colts uh, and their chances, whatever chances, uh, whatever your evaluation might be, of the chances that the Colts would have against the New York Jets, who, as you probably know, won the AFL championship? Well, I saw that, Pat. I don't know anything about New York. I have no idea. I know that Baltimore is the finest team in the NFL. They proved it. Uh, I'm sure that they'll do the job. I can't really evaluate either way, but uh, Baltimore has a tremendous uh, football team, and I'm sure they'll win the game. Let me ask you this. Uh, Coach Collier, in his post-game comments just a minute ago, made the point that uh, it seemed that Baltimore was up, they were high, and for some reason uh, the Browns, you, Cleveland, were not very high. Uh, how does that happen? Uh, or does anybody know? Do you know? Do you have any idea how a team could not be up for a championship game or could one team could be higher than another? Well, you could maybe ask Dallas that the same last I'm week. Sure this is the could. same thing. It, I don't know if we had the feeling, well, our big game was last week and now we're just coming here this week and we expected to do the same job and we didn't get prepared the same way. Uh, there are many ifs, ands, and what's about it. We don't really know and uh, we're sorry that we played so poorly, but uh, we'll be back to prove ourselves next year. Bill, may I personally thank you very much for this inconvenience coming in here. I know you didn't feel like doing it, but uh, let me also say thank you very much and congratulations on, on a good year. Thank you, Pat. Now let's go back to Tom Brookshire. All right, and Billy Nelson was a very fine quarterback, and I, I know in the first ball game uh, it was 30-20, and, and you really did worry about this Cleveland ball club then, didn't you? Well, we have a lot of respect for him, Tom, and uh, we still do. I think it's a fine ball club. It's been a fine ball club all season. I think it's really... They really picked up towards the end of the season. Uh, they started off, and I think they got on their winning ways when they started playing us. And uh, we had quite a bit of making up to do for 64, and then this year uh, they did spoil our record. And I really felt that our team was ready today. Uh, it was a great, hard-hitting football game out there, and I have nothing but respect for them. And the only thing that I'd like to say, uh, you know, uh, we have all our wives and friends uh, uh, are back in Baltimore, and there's going to be a little get-together for the wives and the players at, at Bobby's place in the back room, and they'd like to rope it off, I think. You might have about 15 million people. Sure well, I'll party. tell you what, we were, uh, we're real pleased with everything that we did today. Our coaching staff did a great job. Our offensive did, and our offense did, and our defense, that's, I think, I believe it's their fourth shutout. And when you have four shutouts in one season, that's something fantastic. I, I believe some, one of the reporters told me that's the first time that the Browns have ever been shut out. Minutes. Let's roll some of the highlights about, I guess it would be Tom Matty Day if you were here at Municipal Stadium. And Tom, just look up at the monitor and read off what you see about yourself, and I guess you won't be too unhappy. It looks like a slow motion job. I think this is our first play. This is what we call a lag play. It's like a, a sort of a delayed rollout draw where I just uh, pick my own hole, and we pick up about, uh, oh, about 10 yards here. Uh, our line just, you know, just was fantastic today. You're talking about Vogel and Ball oh, and Sullivan. Oh, yeah, Sullivan, and Sullivan and wrestler. And wrestler, Bill Curry. Here's Bill a screen Curry. over here. That this was in the first series. We break down the sideline. I pick up a first down on this, and uh, you can see the people that we had out in front. Uh, we were very aggressive today, and we were very proud. Here's a sweep. Cuts back in, jump over somebody, and pick up another first down. Wrestler again took you off Wrestler that Wrestler and side. Sullivan, uh, these guards pulled out today like they've never pulled out. They just did a great job. And here's one of the scores. We go in for a touchdown. There's a quick hitter, hitter up the middle. Here's a slow motion shot now. and Here's the other touchdown. It was a 37 trap. Now you can watch our line go in there and just cut them down. Got a good and block by Jerry Hill. You're darn there. right. Jerry, Jerry you, can't, you just can't say enough about Jerry Hill. This guy is one of the greatest competitors you ever want to see. And I put a move on one of the guys, broke to the corner, and uh, and got in there. I was really, you know, it's just great to feel it. Tommy, are you deceptively fast? What do you have going <laughs> for you? Something's up. Well, I, I'm not deceptively fast by no means. Uh, I just uh, I have average speed. I, I, I consider myself an average back. And, but when you play with a team like this, uh, it, it, it's just great to be able to get in there and play with them. Uh, 
I don't consider myself a superstar, Tom. I just consider myself going in there and trying to do the job the best I can. And with a team like we have and a coaching staff that we have, I really feel that you just got to give it your all all the time. Tom Matty, number 41, and he gave it his all this afternoon. We'll be back now with more here in this Baltimore dressing room in just a moment as the NFL today continues with Pro Football Report. The high range is cut off. If the cattle can't get to you, you've got to get to the cattle. Come to where the flavor is. Come to Marlboro Country. At Persona, we got a simple directive from our chairman of the board. Our blades have to shave better than any other blades. Better! So, we developed electro-coated Persona blades. Injector and double-edged. Better! Better, yes. Don Shula, from John Carroll to the <laughs> secondaries of the NFL to the top of the NFL, really, as the, as the great coach of the Colts, is a long way to go. Well, uh, the only thing I can say is that I'm just so proud of our football team and our coaching staff and everybody connected uh, with our organization, from Carroll Rosenblum, our owner, on down. And this, this didn't happen out there. It was a, uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of frustration through the years. I think that our football team, since I've been here, has been disappointed more than any other football team has. We've played well, yet we've never reaped the harvest, and today is a day that we're going to relax and enjoy it a little bit. And uh, I just think that uh, we deserve to win. We've played well all year long, and today was the climax. Don, uh, Billy Nelson bought his offensive line steaks last week to get him the block. Uh, <laughs> are you going to buy this entire ball club uh, champagne and steaks? Hey, yeah, we've got a little something planned tonight, and we're going to do a little buying and relaxing and celebrating, and, uh, boy, they certainly deserve it. But... Uh, we still got our eye on one more ball game, and that's going to be the 12th uh, down in Miami, and we're going to be thinking a little bit about that Don, after tonight. Don, what about a ball club now? Let's say you've had disappointments, and you have. You lose one last year, and you lose it all. You lose a playoff game to, to Green Bay once, and you lost it all. Uh, how do you get them back and start it again the next season? Well, what do you the thing them? that I've always uh, stressed is that uh, anybody that feels sorry for themselves and starts making excuses are losers, and we don't like to have losers around our winning people, and thing that we've done is try to get it out of our mind as soon as it's over with last year it was tough uh, when we got knocked out of it but what good does it do you to moan and to bellyache about the thing the only thing we try to do our whole theme from training camp on was to be better and we wanted to be, be, be better than we were last year and as it's turned out uh, we are better I remember last year at the Pro Bowl I asked you what you needed and you said just one more <laughs> victory that was right. All you wanted, right yeah we didn't win enough last year we won uh, a little bit more this year and that's why we're here right now and I'm just, again, so proud of our football players. Don Shula, you didn't do any alibi, and when it was the bad times, you took them in stride, and you did bring this ball club on, and I think that might be the reason that the entire nation is so darn proud of you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very Don much. Don Shula, the head coach of the Baltimore Colts, and a great one. Uh, Lenny Lyles, please. Mr. Lyles. All right, Len, all right. Finish. Keep the camera high. Had to, get, had to get this fellow in here. He was just accusing Don Shula of cutting his time on That's television. Right. And right. This is number 43, who plays the right corner, a spot that I am too familiar with. Yeah, uh, you Lenny, know about that, don't you? Lenny, <laughs> you were covering, I think, the toughest receiver right now in football, Paul Warfield, and you did a great job. But what did he give you? Well, he didn't give me a lot today. He, he seemed to try to move inside. I expected him to go outside, but uh, he tried to get inside moves. I got a little help out of my linebackers when he did come in. And I try to stick to him a little bit closer this time. I, I, I felt like if I play him a little tougher on the slick field, what I could probably handle him. And uh, after I showed him that he wasn't going to have a great day, well, they seemed to cool off and start going to the other side. But I'm just thankful that I was able to be successful against him and uh, hold him down a little bit. Lenny, what do you tell uh, Don Shinnick? You and 66 have to be pretty close. Uh, uh, you're back there like two ships in the sea, passing one another, looking for receivers all the time. Do you talk to that linebacker a lot? All the time. Uh, uh, my success depends on Don. As you know, you've played uh, in that back there. And... Uh, uh, if I can get done and work outside when Paul wants to move outside, well, I can hang inside. And this time, it can kind of, we have him in the middle of us, and he can't do very much, and the pass will hold the ball up. This gives the line a chance to rush. 
But of course, any successful pass defense is a rush of the line. But as, I, as you said, Don Sinek is a vital part of my coverage. Uh, without him, uh, I probably couldn't do some of the things that I'm able to do. And now it's on against guys like Don Maynard and Lamas and people like that. Lenny Lyles, good luck to you. They tell me you're faster now than when you broke in coming out Well, of you know how it is with wine. Uh, you, you get better with age. But I'd like to say hello to everybody in Louisville, all my people there and everything. And uh, we'll be looking forward to the Jets. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Lenny. Okay. Our best at to and from, of course, Lenny Lyles. We'll be back now with more in the Baltimore dressing room in just a moment on the Pro Football Report. Shell presents The Answer Man, and here he comes in the answer to our first question. Somebody asked, what's the world's record for gasoline mileage? What must be the world's record was set in 1952 by two Shell engineers. They drove this modified Chevy and got 168 miles per gallon of gasoline. They used tricks you wouldn't dare try in normal driving, like rock-hard bald tires to cut friction, a special body without bumpers, streamlined to cut wind resistance, never drove over 20, and they coasted whenever possible. Their gasoline, Shell's top quality as it came from the pump. Next question. Someone told me that besides platformate, other ingredients help Super Shell's mileage. Is that right? Yes, indeed. There are several ingredients. One is TCP, Shell's patented additive. It helps keep spark plugs from fouling, misfiring, and wasting gasoline. TCP teams up with platformate to give you good mileage. Thank you. The Answer Man is brought to you by the makers of Super Shell Good Mileage Gasoline. When you win 34 to nothing, the defense has to do the job. And uh, gosh, Ordell Brazy's been doing this a long, uh, I feel like we're almost brothers. Number 81, you've been playing 12 years. Uh, they say it might be your last, but uh, let's don't put any words in your mouth. I'll make that decision a little later there, Tommy. I haven't really come to it, and I'm not definite on it yet. But uh, uh, this has been a great season. You know, it'd be a great uh, opportunity to bow out on top. And, uh, you know, you always kind of look forward to something like that. But uh, again, as I say, I'll make my decision a little later. Ordell Brazy from the Dakotas, and let's roll some of the highlights, his great defensive highlights, and I've got to think the Baltimore defense is one of the best team defenses I've ever watched. Let's watch it now. We have a lot of pride there. We feel that uh, we're very aggressive. There are some things that... Uh, Big rush right there. Yeah, well, it's, uh, he held the ball. Of course, our receivers had a good coverage on that play. Did you do yeah, a lot of looping to today, Ordell? Well, a little bit, but not a great deal. Of course, uh, with that, uh, the, the condition the field was in, it was difficult to do that. So you, you had to go pretty much straight away. And There's your running mate right there, Fred Miller. Fred's a, a tremendous uh, tackle to play next to. He's very mobile, and you can do a lot with him. He can run around. You see he's got a good uh, pass rush there, plus you can uh, run a lot of games with him. He plays like Alex Karras a little bit, doesn't he? Quick and... Yeah, but yeah, that's right. But uh, he, he's quick, uh, very strong against the runs also. Ordell, is Nelson tough to get? He drops back awfully deep. Well, I like a quarterback that will drop back deep. It will give you a chance uh, to get after him, and uh, you can take that wide rush outside, especially when you have the outside responsibility. A quarterback like Sonny Jurgensen, who just drops back shallow and pops it, difficult to rush. Here's a long pass attempt there as it... Is knocked away and well covered by Rick Volk, the young man that's such a great job for you from Michigan. Huh? Well, they all do a great job for us back there. Ordell Brazy, number 81, thank you again. And uh, don't cheat us out of some more good football. Stick around a while, will you? Thank you very much, Tom. Ordell Brazy, let's see. All right, let's see. We'll get somebody else here if we can. Bobby Boyd. Let's see if we can come up with somebody across the way. Jerry Kramer's over talking to Billy Ray Smith. Uh, Billy Ray? Mr. Mr. Rosenblum? Mr. Rosenblum, Billy Ray Smith. Carol Rosenblum, the owner, the very patient owner of the Baltimore Colts, will be coming over this way. And also, Billy Ray Smith, if we can get Jimmy Orr across here, he's got a cigar, it weighs about 25 pounds. And Freddie Schubach Jr. sends his best regards to his father, of course, uh, down in Philadelphia, where he was with the Eagles team. Mr. Rosenblum, uh, this is another happy day. Uh, I saw you interviewed by Jack Whitaker. You were still a little bit cautious last week, but you're not cautious now. Tom, you just have to be careful what you say, as you well know. You can't jinx a ball club. But, you know, really, this, is, this squad, as I said last week, is a real fine bunch of guys. And not only fine football players, they're fine men. I told Shula when he came I thought this would be my last coach. And that's the way it looks like it's going to be. Just a fine young man, a fine coach. And I do want to say that last week we beat a great football team in the Vikings, and this week we beat a great Cleveland team. Yes, you did. And, you know, it's a funny thing. I'm sitting out there, and it's cold, and it's a horrible day, and the score got to be 24-zip, 
and the sun came out, and the birds <laughs> sang, and the skies were blue, Tom. And it got warm again. And it got so warm, I, I, I just can't say enough about the ball club and how happy we were, and the good Lord has sure been good to us. Carol Rosenblum, the owner of the Colts, and a gracious, gracious winner. Thank you very Tom, much. Tom, it's nice to be with you. All right, sir. On my right, uh, the little slippery fella still gives him the little goat fake like this and slips around him. Jimmy Orr, and Jimmy put that big cigar up there. I don't know if you've got that thing behind you or I not. got some, most of us going now, Brookie. Uh, what's going to happen tonight in Baltimore? Is this uh, just a big party time? Well, that, that plane's going to be a party, too, I'm afraid, going back. But uh, we're really going to celebrate because uh, we've been close a number of times and uh, never have been able to cash in. And uh, it was getting awfully late in my career, and I, I did want to be on the championship team, and uh, I certainly am happy about it. Jimmy, let's say something about John Unitas. It might be a, a little bit of a heart-tugging year for John uh, you played with him a, lo a long time, didn't you? Right, sure have. And, uh, well, you know, you can't say anything, but John's the greatest. And uh, it's too bad that uh, he didn't have more to do with this ball club because uh, he has taken us so far. He's been to Baltimore Colts since he's been here. Uh, but uh, we have some other players that uh, picked up the slack. And I think we always played a little harder when John wasn't there because uh, we always leaned heavily on John when we got in a tight spot. And uh, he usually came through for us. But uh, it's unfortunate he wasn't able to be... Uh, a little more instrumental in this ball club. Jimmy, I notice that you go over now once in a while and you flank her right next to Willie Richardson, and this puts Mackey all by himself on more or less a weak side. This is a pretty good-looking formation. Yeah, how would you like Mackey all by himself? No, thanks a lot. <laughs> I like triple coverage and try to get some more linebackers. Right. You need you know? all the help you can get with John Mackey because he really is a horse. You look forward to going against the Jets? I sure do. Uh, Joe Namath, uh, know him pretty well, and uh, looking forward to going down there and uh, see if we can't beat him. All right, Jimmy Orr, the great flanker for the Colts, and uh, this has to be one of the big days. We'll be back with more here in the Baltimore dressing room on the NFL Today as Pro Football Report continues. Hey, look at us now. We've got the winners, and how Lincoln Mercury leads the way. Lincoln Mercury leads the way for 1969 with the all-new Marquis, the most dramatically styled motor car since the Continental Mark III. Marquis brings a completely new look to medium-priced luxury cars. Two- and four-door Brones. Richly appointed convertibles. And the world's most fashionable station wagon, Marquis Colony Park. If Continental made a wagon, this would be it. Marquis. Marquee, Marquee, each one a beautiful reason why Lincoln Mercury leads the way. Well, jumping up here, trying to flatten out his hair and everything, is Bobby Boyd, number 40, one of the one of the very fine cornerbacks. Uh, Bobby, uh, briefly here, we got about 20 seconds. Uh, one of the big wins with one of the great teams, or you've been with a lot of them? Well, uh, it's the greatest since I've been here, Tommy. There's no question about it. Uh, I've been playing foot professional football and football all my life, and uh, this is the first time I've been with a winner, and I, I'm just over overjoyed, to tell you the truth. Are you sort of uh, sure of it, though? Did you come into this knowing that if you played your best, you would win or you could win? Uh, Tom, we think if we play our best that, that we can play anyone, and... Uh, I, I think today we did play our best, and uh, you saw what happened. Bobby, now it's on to the Super Bowl, the big check, and, of course, the wives will all love you back in Baltimore tonight, won't they? Uh, we hope so, Tom. Bobby Boyd out of Oklahoma, and he's done a great job in the NFL secondaries for years. Good luck to you in the Pro Bowl. Well, that's pretty much the story here in the Baltimore dressing room. We've tried to give you a, a cross-section of the Baltimore team, and that pretty much is victory. They're big and they're strong. They're gracious today. They're very aggressive. And I really think they were very confident. I think they came into this town, Cleveland, Ohio, knowing that if they played their kind of football, they could win. And they did. 34 to nothing, a great defensive win. The Colts are the NFL champions. This is Tom Brookshire for Pat Summerall and Jack Buck saying goodbye from Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. Pro Football Report was brought to you by your Lincoln Mercury dealer with the winning idea cars that lead the way and by John Hancock Mutual Life Insurance Company and by Muriel Cigars, a product of Consolidated Cigar Corporation, 
a Gulf and Western company. guest list. Eddie Albert, Lainey Kazan, George Kirby, Charlie Manna, and many more. What a show. The Ed Sullivan Show, tonight on CBS.